Two days ago, we got a gameplay trailer showing not much of anything. Yesterday, we got a whole bunch of gameplay news and a gameplay blog detailing everything from defense to finishing to shooting to... Oh, don't mind me, guys. The 2019 championship ring that Toronto won in the NBA championship. <laughs> I don't know how that got there. That's so crazy. Oh, my God. And today, Mike Wang's been on a flurry on Twitter. Man, he's releasing so much details and news. We got a lot of surface level stuff yesterday. He's getting into the nitty gritty today, fellas. Let me catch y'all up in case y'all ain't in tune. First of all, if y'all new to the channel, scroll down, tap that big red button. It's gonna make sure you subscribe. Then click the bell, right? It's gonna make sure you get notified next time video drops so y'all stay in tune. I appreciate y'all as always. Y'all been showing so much love the past couple weeks, man. Mwah, mwah, mwah. I'm not gonna give y'all this ring. This is for y'all, man. <laughs> Here you go. Mike Wang has clarified here on Twitter that yes, on current gen, pie charts are returning. Someone asked, so what's up with the My Player Builder on current gen? We still got pie charts or no? Mike Wang says, yes, there are pie charts in the current gen builder. Some new pies were added. So if you didn't like the system last year, you might not like it too much this year neither. And you can get the vibe as we go through this video here that there's a lot of things that new gen has that current gen doesn't have. So I know there's a raging debate on which one people's gonna play. If you do have access to both current and next gen, it might make sense to get both. But if you were gonna play one, it looks like as more information is being revealed that next gen is getting more love this year. Which isn't a crazy realization to come to because 2K's dev team is working on next gen. It's a whole nother dev team that just recently started working on 2k that's working on current gen so they're in different leagues in my opinion mike wang clarifies as he should for contest we use interior defense in the paint and perimeter defense outside this year the block rating will determine how frequently you actually make contact with the ball Mike Wang doing this year what he probably should have done last year because last year a whole bunch of people spent money and time on builds only to find out that the attribute they spent the money and time on didn't do the thing they thought it did. So this year he's clarifying ahead of time just so y'all know what time it is. Mike Wang clarifies that in new gen, yes, the steal rating is much more important for steal success this year. And that was in response to someone asking, are better steal animations unlocked after a certain threshold is met for the steal rating? So you get better animations and faster animations and you could he he mentioned in the blog post even strip slashes attacking the paint and there's badges to help counter that of course hopefully it's not too overpowered but it seems like there were significant changes made to the steal rating this year someone asked mike wang is posterizer an nba 2k 22 current and next gen he says yes it is it boosts the frequency of contact dunks with the button and makes it easier to successfully finish aggressive skill dunks, and that's on new gen. I struggle to believe that the current gen version of the game is gonna be balanced because every time we hear things, like everything we've been hearing so far between the differences, it seems like something was made for next gen and then it's like, does it work on current gen? And they just throw it on there to see if it works. I, I struggle to believe current gen is gonna be balanced much. Uh, it might take some, some disco tech, you know what I'm saying? It might take some public game testing from the people who purchased the game to get it to that point. Mike Wang clarifies with the new Menace badge that yes, the higher the tier, the more the attributes are hit. So almost like Intimidator, but outside of the paint. Hmm? So there was a bunch of new badges that were announced yesterday. Mike Wang is starting to clarify what some of those badges really do. He gave some details here. He said, Sniper modifies the impact of shot time and it gives you an extra boost for well-timed shots and an extra penalty for poorly timed shots. Think of it as the opposite of flexible release. So flexible release is packed up and out the game. Thank God, the idea of rewarding bad releases blows my mind. This badge makes a lot more sense, but uh, Power asked the real question here. He said, could we get some clarification as to what a well-timed shot is? To which Mike Wang responded, if you cut up and make the window into four equal pieces, the two outer pieces being early and late, get an extra penalty. The two inner pieces being slightly early and slightly late, get an extra bonus. Excellent is a guaranteed make, and very early, very late, outside the make window, is a guaranteed miss. There's a few very interesting things here. Very early and very late is a guaranteed miss. That hasn't been the case in every 2K. Good to know. Excellent is a guaranteed make definitely hasn't been the case in every previous 2K because you can hit your green window and in previous 2Ks, if your three point shot rating wasn't good enough, there was still a slight chance that you can miss depending on factors. I also feel like slightly early and slightly late is like the average release. Like not many people get early and late. Most people get slightly early, slightly late. So hopefully it doesn't roar too much bad releases because there could still be a bad release that 
registers in 2K system as a slightly early or slightly late, let alone a good release. Yeah, he hadn't mentioned where that falls in here. But um, in theory, this badge makes sense. You should be rewarding people who release the ball well and punishing people who don't. It is quite the opposite of flexible release, which not only stayed in the game for multiple years, but found a way to become one of the most powerful badges in the game is finally removed. Mike Ryan clarifies that the dunk meter stays on even when the shot meter option is turned off. So you don't have a choice this year. It's also not that big of a deal, guys. If y'all can't time a dunk with a massive window, I don't know what to tell you, okay? He also clarifies that yes, dunk landings are not both gens. The steady shooter badge has been marked from the game. Three point recognition is still in the game. You no longer lose the ball when you do a hop step by accident in the game. So the biggest thing added to finishing an NBA 2K22 so far that we know of is this new feature they're calling the aggressive skill dunk. Mike Wang mentions a couple things. One, that it's actually very hard this year. He said rare to hit contact animations if you're not doing an aggressive skill dunk. It is possible, but rare. Someone asked Mike Wang, does aggressive dunk timing also apply to our standing contact dunk animations? And if so, will it be harder to time due to shorter animations? Mike says, they are quick and harder to time, so it's probably best to just stick to the shot button or different pro stick directions. But if you do, you can boost your make percentage with the pro stick down. So there's a risk, but there's also a reward for using it. And he mentioned a few times here that the aggressive skill dunk is only applied to new gen. So if you're playing the current gen version of the game, this doesn't apply. So I'm glad people in the community is asking questions about some of the new features and not like the stuff that's just being rehashed because somebody asked a good question. He said, how does alley timing work? Is it as soon as you catch the ball? Mike clarifies, the meter pops up while the pass is in the air. If you press the shot button too early, you'll miss the catch completely. If you stop it inside the window, you'll make the shot or at least have a good chance to. If you don't press the button at all, you'll catch and come down with the ball. As long as this isn't too challenging to do and the average person could reasonably do it consistently, I don't see any problem with dunk timing. It's only the people that like don't give a f and are like horrible at timing dunks that should be penalized. Making dunks too challenging, especially ones that aren't contact, might just add like too much complexity to an otherwise simple feature in the game. Mike says Intimidator and Rim Protector are the two main badges for rim protection. Paint Defense is probably in my top five 2K22 upgrades this year. Blocking is miles better than it has been in the past. I've been noting more like natural contact block animations, like your ability to interrupt animations is better now than it was in previous 2Ks, because it was brutal in 2Ks like 2K13 and even 2K17. I think their commitment to rim protection is important because contact dunks have plagued NBA 2K21 to the point where for a lot of people it was just unplayable. So I'm glad they focused their attention this year on it. Mike Wang saying his top five things actually makes me a little bit more optimistic that they actually improved the issue. Mike says the motion team did a lot of work to improve the feel of navigating around screens, reduce the vacuum effect, improved resolution logic, and more. They feel much tighter now. Tighter is something he mentioned a couple times in the blog post as well. And I've heard, just like we heard in the blog post yesterday, and we heard in blog posts last year, things feel tighter or there's less vacuums on screen. So I get it's not one of those things where you could just, boom, remove it from the game, but they see it as an issue. They're saying that it's improved this year, so we'll have to play and see it. But I'll tell you this, man, and for a person who's played 2K17, and I played a lot when 2K17 was out, it was brutal. It was like a vacuum like you've never seen before. It actually compromised the gameplay to such a crazy degree. It's gotten a lot better since then. I like that they're working towards improving it more. So this year they took deep threes, which was previously called limitless range, and they split it up into two different badges. So you can shoot from long range, like 30 feet out effectively with the spot up limitless badge or the chef badge, but people had some questions and Mike Wang clarified here saying, the chef rules possibly could change, must be from 30 feet from the basket, you have to wait two or more seconds after you catch the ball, have to be moving for at least half a second, and if you stop before shooting, you have to shoot before one second expires. So if you're a shot maker and you like to shoot on the fade, you equip the chef rules badge. If you're a sharpshooter and you like to shoot standing, you equip the, the limitless spot up badge. You can't have it both ways this year unless you take your badge points and apply them to both badges. Mike Wang also says that the cheesy spin dunk from the three point line that a lot of bigs were doing has been removed from the game. 
He clarifies there are some wild dunk landings this year. I like that. I want it to feel like a dunk contest when you're playing in the park. No, no, I don't want to say like that sounds crazy, but like, you know how Vince Carter would come down from a crazy dunk and he'd do these or he, he would do, you'd do something. The only way this can go wrong is if they charge like an insane amount for these, which would be like highly disappointing. Mike Wang mentions the new shot meter that we saw yesterday and you're seeing on the screen right now is on both gens. And he dives deeper because people had questions about this new aggressive skill dunk feature. He says, aggressive skill dunks let you attempt dunks in situations where you'd otherwise get a layup. I wouldn't say it's guaranteed dunk every time. We tried that, it was either cheesy or a brick fest. I think it is in a good spot now, but we'll fine tune it with community feedback. So Zens has been a huge issue in NBA 2K for the past couple years, a growing issue. A lot of people feel way too comfortable just cheating to be able to make shots. One of the things Mike Wang did to combat that was depending on how far you were from the basket, the speed of your shot varied. Mike Wang says that's out of the game now. They took out the vibration shot cue and they also took out shot aiming in an attempt to curb the people cheating while shooting. He says, shot speed is still variable. It just doesn't vary based on distance anymore that was still easy to exploit. Mike Wang also says that everything he stated about dribble moves goes for both gens. Park Handles is not returning to NBA 2K22 until Mike Wang can find a way to introduce it without it interrupting the regular flow of dribbling, which is actually a controller specific problem. I don't know how much you guys know that. It's actually kind of difficult to, to bind keys on controllers and not have like one key do multiple things because i play on pc now and there's so many keys on a keyboard and there's even keys on your mouse you can use and they design mouses with like 18 different binds you can put on it there's so much flexibility when it comes to pc but because 2k is a game more naturally played on controller there's only so many things one button can do so until mike wang can come up with a better way to include park dribbles because in the past it just kept interrupting and being accidentally triggered the try hard dribblers hated park handle so although it kind of looked cool and the casual audience like the fact that they can do all those fancy moves easily. It has been removed from the game until further notice. It's a question we ask every year and I'm glad it was asked this year. What ball control is needed for pro dribble moves in next gen? Mike Wang says, you'll want an 85 ball handle just like previous years. But Swante replies, is 86 anything special? How many tiers of dribbling are there? To which Mike Wang responds, there are benefits to going above 85. Mainly, your moves will be faster and more effective. There are still three general tiers, less than 60, 60 to 84, and 85 plus, just like last year. But he mentions there are different SIGs unlocked at very other ratings, 65, 70, 75, 80. So although these are the dribbling tiers, it's like there's tiers within tiers, so you have to be careful on like how you decide to cap out your player this year. You have to be specific. And it might depend on how effective some of the SIGs are, because if you're telling me those SIGs you get at 65, 70, 75, 80 are useless, then you'd be better off just keeping your ball control at 60. I actually wasn't aware until just now that ball control even affected the speed of the animation, but uh, that's some information that if you didn't know, now you know. So on top of ball handling requirements, there's also gonna be height requirements to certain animations because Mike Wang says that tall seven foot players just looked crazy doing some of those dribble moves. Which, but most of the time, if you get that tall, you probably wouldn't even have the ball handle necessary. So unless you were like a pure playmaker, point forward in the flesh, but he's saying there are height requirements to dribble animations now. Uh, NBA 2K Intel has this uh, beautiful graphic here of all the new badges, so you can pause and take a look if you're interested in any of these new badges and how it applies to you and the build that you wanna create in NBA 2K22. So I asked a question in yesterday's video as it relates to this new badge called Mismatch Expert. The idea was if someone switches and now you got a tall defender on you, you can shoot over top taller defenders. In the history of NBA 2K, 2K is always valued tall and lanky players. If you were not even in position to contest, but you were tall, sometimes it just puts you in positions to contest and it said heavily contested. And vice versa, if you were short, but you were in position to contest, just off the merit of you being short, it wouldn't qualify as a contest. That also applies to your wingspan. So I always told people, unless you really need your shooting attributes, just make your wingspan a little bit longer. It's gonna pay dividends on the defensive end. But now there's a badge to add some balance on the other side of things with mismatch expert Mike Wang says doesn't necessarily have to be a matchup switch which is an important uh, distinction it takes effect anytime you're undersized against a defender similar to giant slayer except it's specific to shooters at the three-point line as dope in my opinion as a sharpshooter I can't tell you how many times as a tall player with a long wingspan that was not in position that counted as a contest having a badge as long as it's not overpowered that could help counter that is dope
Shot contest percentages is gonna be back, so you'll know what NBA 2K thought about how you contested somebody's shot. Mike Wang says also about shot contest that this was a primary focus for our team this year. I'll never say anything is perfect, but the new contest system is much more reliable and predictable. Mike Wang also says as it relates to driving that you can still get contact dunks without doing aggressive skill dunks, but it's gonna be much more harder now. He says it's gonna be rare. So if you do wanna get contact animations, you're gonna have to attempt those aggressive skill dunks. And as he reminds us 40 times, it only applies to new gen. Mike Wang clarifies that there's still a height cutoff for some jumpers, six foot nine or under will get them all, just like previous years. He also mentions that all badges are identical between gens. The Showtime and Heart Crusher badges have been removed. And big news, the speed glitch from current gen 2K21 that them TikTok superstars have been abusing is finally gone. People have been asking for that to be removed in 2K21, but I guess Mike Wang waited till 2K22 to make that change. Because as a dev explained in a video one time, sometimes there are changes you can make to gameplay that break like 70 other things and it's too risky to do while a game is out without like extensive testing. So maybe it was one of those things, who knows? But if you did hate the speed glitch, rejoice. If you abuse the speed glitch, you're gonna have to get a lot more crafty this year. It might take a little bit more skill for you to figure out how to dribble quickly. I imagine it won't be a month after the launch of NBA 2K22 before Steezo and the likes, G-Man and everybody else figures out like crazy combinations that they can do on the next gen version. And Mike Wang also says, and I don't know how much I believe him on this one, that with the right ratings and badges, midi fades are deadly. And hopefully that also applies to the post game because they were showing post players some loves in the blog post yesterday. So this is usually when the floodgates open and that's Mike Wang news, that's trailers, that's screenshots, that's all type of different news. And this is also the week where NBA 2K said themselves that we're supposed to be hearing something about my team so we could expect that in the coming days. If you guys are new and you missed yesterday's video where we talked about things like the improvements made to the post game, make sure to click this video right here. Subscribe to the channel, turn on post notifications. I love y'all, man. I appreciate y'all watching as always. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Don't mind me. I'm out. Peace.